<laughs> if I gave you a problem about tests and homeworks, that's a good indication I think that's an important subject. Okay, if I didn't give you any, if I, like I cover some material in the lectures I can't. Scan it and post it. So it'll be the final exam from last year. It'll be pretty representative. I looked at it, and it'll be pretty representative of what you can expect this year. All right? The way to study is solve problems without the solution sitting in front of you. And then if you get stuck, you can go back and look at the solution. So I would, I would um, you guys only have so much time, I think. So I would, I would if, if possible, I would just do, you have five exams now. You have the two exams you took, and you have the three exams I posted. And so if you, well, actually I only posted, right, I didn't post one last time because it didn't work out, but you have four of them. If you, if you have more time than that, then I would start doing the homeworks backwards, like the written homeworks backwards, because um, there's sure to be a problem on differential equations, right, because I haven't given a problem on that at all on any exam because we hadn't covered it, right? So any questions? It'll be open book. It'll be two hours. It'll be slightly longer than a midterm, but not a lot. Um, If I ask anything about MATLAB, it's one of those one-line code things. So as long as you have the notes, you can just see what the command is to use fsolve or something like that. It'll be pretty, pretty s straightforward. Anything else? All right. OK. You notice I haven't shaved until you turn these in. So now I'm going to, it was an honor of you guys, actually. <laughs> now that I have these, my personal hygiene should improve. All right. So here's the last topic. Um, it is um, slightly different in the sense that it's a different kind of differential equation problem. So I'm going to describe it. It's something called a mixed boundary value problem. And so the idea here is that every equation, everything we've done so far is based on right, all the differential equations that we have studied, be it linear or nonlinear, are so-called initial value problems. They look like this, right? I give you the differential equation or system of differential equations. I give you the initial condition or a vector of initial conditions. And you want to integrate this model forward in time or whatever x is, OK? So mixed boundary value problems are a little bit different. And they're problems for which you have boundary conditions at two different places, two different x's, OK? And I'm going to kind of give a little background on that. We can't go in great depth, obviously, in 50 minutes. But um, I'm going to give a little example of a problem from Heaton <coughs> that you'll, you're sure to get when you take um, uh, the classes next year, which is a heat exchanger. I picked this problem because I think it's pretty accessible, like intellectually, right? Exchanging heat between two streams, I don't think it's too hard. And then I'm going to show you how to solve a problem like this using something called the shooting method. Um, I'm going to use MATLAB to solve it. <coughs> because it's not really amenable to analytical solution. So that's the goal, OK? All right. So I already said this. So these are the kind of equations we're used to solving are systems of equations, right? So we might have a system of equations and some spatial coordinate. The main thing I did in that regard was you might remember that plug flow reactor where things flow along a reactor and react. So there might be a spatial coordinate, which in that case is the distance along the reactor. Or there might, usually it's time is the independent variable. OK. Um, so the idea to solve a problem like this is you just conceptually integrate the problems from the initial condition you're given forward in time. Um, and so that's why we call it initial value problem. Now, if you have a problem, which you'll have to see an example to get an idea why you would, um, you might have a problem where these, these, these conditions here that the, you have to solve the equation subject to are specified at two different values of x. It doesn't really make sense in terms of time, but it will when you see a problem in terms of space, OK? So those are called boundary value problems, or more specifically, mixed boundary value problems, OK? So just to, well, I'll do this in a second. And, the, and you have to solve these in a different way. So in order to see where I'm coming from here, maybe it's useful to look at this example. So I assume you've heard of heat exchangers. So that's one of the basic unit operations in chemical engineering. So we have a hot stream and a cold stream, and we'd like to transfer heat between them. I'll come back to this slide. 
But if you look at the picture, let's say on the right, you're flowing hot fluid in what's called the shell, and you're flowing the cold fluid in what's called the tube, and there's heat transfer taking place. But you can see that the, the two streams enter at different locations in the domain there, right? The cold stream enters on the left, and the hot stream enters on the right. So what I'm liable to know is the temperature of the hot stream on the left, and the, sorry, the cold stream on the left, and the temperature of the hot stream on, on the right. So that means I have something like a domain that looks like this, and here's z, let's say, and here's zero, and maybe this is the length of the exchanger, and what did I say? The cold comes in here and out here. This is cold, and then the hot like this, okay? So in other words, I know the temperature of the hot stream entering and the temperature of the cold stream entering, but they're at different locations, okay? So that makes it something called a mixed boundary value problem, and that's the focus of what I want to talk about. And so these problems are going to be a lot more ch uh, challenging. And so generally you might <clears throat> write it like this. So you have two differential equations, let's say. Let's just say we have just two. There's two dependent variables called y and w. <clears throat> and um, there's an independent variable called z. And No, this is some real, I'm not sure why I have three variables here. Y and W, so what is Z? Oh, Z is the independent variable, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we have two, independent variable Z, two dependent variables Y and X, and so for the variable Y, we might, for example, have a boundary condition that we specify at Z equals zero, and then so that would be corresponding to like that cold stream over there. And for the other equation, the W equation, we have a boundary condition we specified L. That would be like the hot stream. Okay? And you can see this is going to not be so easy to solve because in MATLAB, if you look at all the methods, for example, in MATLAB, it says, give me, write a function that evaluates F1 and F2 and then tell me the initial conditions. That, that WL thing is not an initial condition. It's a, it's a boundary condition at the other side. So we're going to have to use MATLAB a little differently to solve a problem like this. Okay. So conceptually, <clears throat> this first equation here, you want to integrate this equation from z equals 0 to z equal l, but this equation you actually want to integrate from z equal l to z equal 0, the opposite direction. So the question is, how do you go about doing that? Okay. So we need to do something a little bit different here. All right, so here's a motivating example. I already showed it to you conceptually. So Hopefully you can understand in chemical processing, it's very common you need to hit heat a stream up or exchange heat between two streams. Like you might have a hot stream you want to recover the heat from or you need, might need to heat up a stream before it goes into a distillation column, a reactor or something like this. So heat exchangers are very common. This is one of the unit operations you guys will see in the lab <laughs> a couple of years from now. Um, so there's two ways you could do this. The way I have it depicted on the right is at the bottom here. It's called countercurrent flow. Right, the two streams flow in opposite directions of each other. And you can also have something called co-current flow. That's where they flow in the same direction. Now, if you have co-current flow, then you, both the boundary conditions are going to be here, right? And that's going to be an initial value problem. So I'll give you the cold temperature and the hot temperature here. And then you can just integrate these two equations that will be coupled together. I'll show them to you. Uh, forward in, in, in Z. But if I give you this problem, it's a diff whole different ball game because you're going to know that one stream here, hot stream, cold stream there, and you're not going to know how to solve it, I don't think. Okay? All right. So let me see if I missed anything. Heat exchangers are common. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys have done much or anything with heat transfer, but you might imagine the... Um, the amount of heat transferred between two fluids is proportional to the difference in the temperature between the two fluids, right? So you're going to have a rate of heat transfer from, let's say, the hot fluid to the cold fluid, and that's going to be proportional to the, fluid temp the difference in the fluid temperatures, and probably also the contact area, something about how much area there is between the two fluids, right? 
Bipole two fluids by and only the only place where they contact is this pencil. There won't be much heat transferred, but if they're like on this huge area here, there'd be a lot of heat transferred. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you that. Okay. So it ends up that usually, so the driving force for heat transfer is temperature difference between the two streams. And you can usually establish a higher temperature difference if you use this arrangement than this one. Okay? So the reason you want to use countercurrent flow is because you can get more heat transfer, typically with countercurrent than co-current. Okay? And again, this is going to lead to a kind of mixed boundary value kind of problem, as I'm about to show you. All right. I see how much time I want to spend on deriving the model. Um, so this is one of those things that um, looks a lot like the plug flow reactor example I gave you. Um, even though I understand that you will not grasp everything that I'm about to tell you in this derivation, I think it's good to be exposed to this now. <laughs> so when you get to the courses in like heat and, um, uh, heat and mass transfer classes that you'll have some exposure to this. So, so there's a schematic, right? Anytime you drive a model, it's a good like to draw a picture of the thing. So here's what we have. We have a cold fluid and it's flowing in this direction and we have a hot fluid flowing in this direction. And they're color coded as you can see. Um, this is a mass flow rate of the cold stream. That's the inlet temperature. Same flow rate coming out, I'm telling you, but a different temperature. Probably hotter than went in. And hot stream coming from the other direction, different flow rate for the hot stream than the cold stream. That's the inlet temperature. That's the outlet temperature. Okay? So if I were to want you to work with this system, what I would give you is these two flow rates and that temperature going in and that temperature going in. And I'd want you to tell me what are the two temperatures coming out, right? That makes sense. So again, the, the values that I give you, the so-called boundary conditions, are at different ends of this domain. So we have to think about how we're going to do this. But first, I want to show you the model. That um, It is a class called mathematical modeling, right? All right. So see how much I'm hoping you can follow most of this. Again, it's a little bit um, beyond the coursework you've currently had, but I think it should be OK. All right, so what, the, what I'm depicting here is so anytime you see a system like this, and someone would want you to drive an equation for that, okay, the first thing you want to think of, obviously, is what kind of equation do I need? Do I need a mass balance? It doesn't look like mass balances are too interesting here. Because number one, I told you the flow in and out of both streams are the same. And I also, there's no components here. There's no mixing, no reaction or anything. <clears throat> so I'm just skipping that. <clears throat> I'm not going to do a momentum balance, which you guys probably, probably don't even know what that is yet but I'm going to do an energy balance, right? You can see that there's some energy effects. And you guys have taken mass and energy balances, so you've done some energy balances, I think, I hope. You guys did that, right? OK. Just for my edification, when you take mass and energy balance to get to energy balance, is that like the last few weeks, or the last day, or the last month, or? The last day. The last day. <clears throat> That's what, that was my fear right there, OK? <laughs> All right, so you haven't seen this a lot, but that's OK. Um, so when you see a system like this and you want to derive an equation, the first thing you're going to learn to do is that you're going to write one of these differential balances, okay? <clears throat> so you're going to take a little piece of this reactor of width delta z, you can see up there, and you're going to write a balance equation over this little element delta z, and then you're going to shrink that delta z to go to zero, and that's going to give you a differential equation. The same thing I did for the plug flow reactor. I realize it's a little speculative, but okay. Um, so that's what I've done here. I've taken a little element out of this reactor, or this heat exchanger, I should say, and I'm depicting it here. Thickness delta Z, Q is being transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. And this is the enthalpy. You guys know what enthalpy is, right? This is, the, this is actually the rate of enthalpy. Everyone knows, you, you, you're used to calculating enthalpy, I hope, like MCP delta T or MCPT, where you have Mass, this is actually a mass flow rate, so this is a rate, but you know, mass times heat capacity times temperature minus a reference temperature, right? Enthalpy. <clears throat> so this is the enthalpy, but because I'm using a mass flow rate, it's, it would be like BTUs per hour, not just, or joules per second or whatever you want. So that's the enthalpy entering in this stream, and that's the enthalpy exiting this stream. You can see the subscript here is Z, and this is Z plus delta Z, okay? Same thing for the hot stream. That's the enthalpy of the hot stream, okay? 
In principle, you, I already told you, you have different flow rate. You might have a different heat capacity, depending on what the two fluids are. Okay? Usually there'll be two different fluids. Um, and then there's the T minus T ref. So that's the enthalpy of the stream coming in the hot, hot stream coming in, and that's the enthalpy leaving. Okay? And that's the heat being um, transferred from the, from the hot stream to the cold stream. So the idea here is that we're going to write a balance that basically says energy is conserved. Right? So I do an energy balance. Over here, I'm just trying to depict kind of the geometry of this. So you have two, um, so the heat transfer is going through an area, right? So if you look at this little piece I've drawn here, I'm having trouble. On one side of the fluid is the cold fluid, on the other side is the hot fluid. It's being transferred through this, this plane, if you will, okay? The plane overall has length L, but I've chopped it up into a little piece, delta Z. The width of this thing is W. I'm just trying to explain to you what W is. So heat transfer is occurring along the length here, we're saying, and the area of the heat transfer matters. So one dimension is L, and the other dimension is this W here, just in case you're wondering what W is. All right. <clears throat> so tell me if this makes sense to you. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having allergies. Um, the the rate of heat transfer is proportional to the difference between the temperatures of the two streams. <laughs> I already told you that earlier. So. And the temperature of the two streams change along the length here, right? Like um, the, both the, the colder stream is getting warmer in this direction, and the, 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 the hot stream is also getting warmer in this direction because it enters warm and exits colder, okay? So the rate of heat transfer is usually modeled like this. You'll learn this. It's the some proportionality constant, it's called a heat transfer coefficient, times the area of heat transfer times the driving force, which is the diff difference in the two temperatures. For my little piece delta Z here, the area is delta Z times W, right? That's the area in which Q goes through. That's why I drew that little picture right there. Okay? So that's, I'm just trying to tell you what the heat transfer rate is between the, the hot fluid and the cold fluid. Okay. So now you can write a balance that looks like this. First of all, we're going to assume, assume no accumulation, which is because we want steady state equations. So we're going to assume there's no accumulation, nothing changes with time. And so if you look at the picture, first I do it on the cold stream. That's the amount of energy coming in the cold stream, right? Coming in at the point Z. That's the amount leaving that little element delta Z. And that's the amount of energy that the system gains, right? Because there's a Q being transferred from the hot to the cold. So there's the sum of the energy um, coming in plus the energy you transferred to the fluid is going to equal the energy of the stream coming out, right? So it's just accumulation, which is zero, in minus out plus generation or plus, yeah, same, just typical balance equation. All right, then. So you look at this equation, and so this is called a differential energy balance. What we're going to do now is divide the equation Let's see if I divide. I think I just divided by delta Z here. Divide the whole equation by delta Z. That puts this over delta Z and cancels the delta Z there. Okay? Now, do the thing you'll learn to do always. Take the limit as delta Z goes to zero. Okay? Because we want to get derivatives out of the equation. So, if you look at this, obviously the, the expression here is a little bit complicated. But if you want to just call this Y, so this is y at z plus delta z minus y at z divided by delta z, take the limit to go to zero. It's the derivative of whatever quantity is in the brackets there. Okay? It's the definition of the derivative. The quantity in the brackets is this thing right here. Okay? So I know it looks more complicated than you're used to, but if I told you this was z at z plus delta z and this was y at z divided by delta z, take the limit goes to zero, you'd call that the derivative of z, of y with respect to z. So I'm just saying there it is. That gives you this right here. Then you have this term. And um, so I, I, can, I can simplify this in several ways. First of all, I'm telling you the flow rate is constant. It doesn't change along the length of the heat exchanger. You can pull that out. The heat capacity is also soon to be constant. So you can pull that out of the derivative. Then you got the derivative of, um, this quantity, T cold minus T, did I just call it R? Okay, that's this. And 
in that zero, right? Because the derivative of a con t ref is just a constant. It doesn't change. Just a reference temperature for calculation of enthalpy. So that means the, der the derivative can be re rewritten just in terms of that. And that gives you that derivative, that gives you that term right there. Okay? So this is a differential equation that given the temperature of the cold stream coming in, in principle, allows you to integrate this to find the temperature of the cold stream leaving. It'll change along the length of the reactor. Cold stream will be getting hotter as you go through. I keep calling it a reactor, I'm sorry. It'll increase as you go along the react uh, <laughs> heat exchanger. Sorry. Um, looks like we've. So this is what we expect. Here's zero. Here's L. Here's the temperature of the cold stream here. And we expect this temperature to be increasing along the length of the reactor until it gets to the outlet. Okay? The hot stream will be hotter up here, and then it should also decrease along the length, right? So the cold stream enters really cold, and the hot stream enters over here really hot. The, the hot stream leaves the reactor colder than it entered. Exchanger. <laughs> OK. Um, here. Any word that I say, I mean this. OK? No matter what I call it. All right, and so the, the cold stream is going to enter the exchanger, increase in temperature along the length until it exits here. We want to know this value. We don't know it right now. And the hot stream is even hotter, clearly. And then it cools until it exits over here. And we want to know that temperature, right? And we're given those two temperatures. So this is kind of what we expect. And there's a differential equation that tells you how the cold stream changes with position along the reactor. Unfortunately, it depends on the temperature of the hot stream, because <laughs> the, the rate of heat exchange is the temperature difference. That means I need, a t I need an equation for the hot side stream as well. Now, I'm, because um, I think you get the idea, <clears throat> we do the exact same thing, okay? And just to set it up, it would look like this, okay? You'd say there's no energy accumulating. What is the rate of energy coming in or enthalpy coming in the inlet, right? The, the hot stream goes the opposite direction. Sorry, just so you understand. It enters at Z plus delta Z and exits at Z. So if you write out the equation here, you'll see that is the rate of energy coming in that little differential element DZ. That's the rate of energy leaving. And that's energy lost, right? Because the heat is being transferred from the hot stream to the cold stream. So the hot stream is losing energy. So, and I did save you the, all the trouble. If you do the same gyrations I just went through, divide by delta Z, take the limit as delta Z goes to zero, simplify the derivative, you'll get this equation here, okay? And again, you've got different boundary conditions. So if you gather these two equations together, so what have I done to get these two equations? You can kind of see here. I've taken the derivative over to this side, and I, deri I divided by that term to get that equation right there. And I did the same thing for the cold stream, which is the equation on the previous page. So there's the, there's the equations we want to solve. All right? So you've got two differential equations. They're obviously coupled together. I'm going to need to tell you that um, heat transfer coefficient u, that, that dimension w. I need to tell you the heat capacity and the flow of the hot and cold streams. I need to tell you the inlet temperature of the two streams. But the problem here, of course, as I've <laughs> Um, said several times as the streams enter at different sides of the exchanger. And therefore, one boundary condition is at zero and the other one's at L. Okay? So this is what's known as a mixed boundary value problem. Two boundary conditions at different locations. Right? You could see it wouldn't matter if both these boundary conditions were over here. Like this, this is, you might think, well, that's a bad deal, right? Both conditions are at L. You would just integrate the equations backwards. It'd still be an initial value problem. It'd just be you'd integrate. The initial condition would be at L, and you'd integrate backwards. So it's no. The problem is they're at two different places. Not that they're ones over here. They're both over here or both over here. It's fine. It's just that one's here and one's there. Okay. So how do you solve a problem like that? All right. So what I'm really going to do is show you how to. Do, you can automate this a little bit, but I'm going to show you how to do it in MATLAB. So let's just say we have an equation like that. It's the same thing as I just gave you, right? 
like z y represents the cold stream temperature, w represents the hot stream temperature. Boundary condition on the cold stream at zero, hot stream at L. All right. So one thing you'll learn when you're an engineer is you have a limited tool set. <laughs> okay. So anytime you don't know how to solve a problem, you try to reduce the problem you don't know how to solve to a problem you do know how to solve. Okay. So when I look at this problem, I think I don't know how to solve this. But I know how to solve an initial value problem, so maybe I could somehow solve this like an initial value problem. That's my goal. Okay. Um, and here's conceptually what you can imagine doing. I don't know this temperature here, right? But I know the hot temperature here. So I know the cold temperature right there, and I know the hot temperature there. So maybe, this is the idea behind this so-called shooting math, I'm going to guess what this value is. I'm going to guess that value. And if I guess that value, then I have an initial value problem. I can integrate these two equations forward in time. And then I can see, when I'm done, does that agree with what I, it's supposed to be, right? Because I've actually specified that value. So guess this value here that you don't know. Integrate the two equations together. Find what you get at L and see if that's what you want. It's unlikely you'll guess right the first time, right? Then you guess again, OK? And that's called the, that's called the shooting method, OK? Um, so that's just basically what it says here. Guess the value of, for example, the hot stream temperature at, at this point here. Integrate the equation, see if it agrees with what the boundary condition should be. If it doesn't, you've got to guess again. This is why you'd want to do this in MATLAB. It's really quick in MATLAB, I'll show you. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you were, um, let me see. So what are you going to do? You're going to keep repeating this until the value that you get by solving the model is almost exactly equal to the boundary condition. Like if, you, if the boundary condition was 500 and you got 500.064, you might say that's good enough. Okay, it just de depends on how accurate you want it to be. Um, and here I pick, there's a rational way to pick W0, but I'm not, I'm not going to really discuss that. It's a little bit too much detail. But let's see if you guys um, have been taught this method, or tell me if this makes sense to you. I don't want to erase that. You ever heard of something called interval halving? Okay. Like, I'm hearing wild enthusiasm. I'm guessing that's something you know in great detail. <laughs> interval halving means something like this. So what do you really want? Let's say that, um, back to this picture here, you know this is the value you want, right? So you find one guess that gives you a value greater than that, then you find another guess that gives you a value lower than that. Then you know the right guess is between those two guesses. You agree with that? Like if I find this guess and then I find it goes up here, then I know the correct guess is somewhere between those two. So the next logical thing is pick halfway between these two as your next guess and try it again, right? And just keep making the interval smaller and smaller by half until you finally get somewhere reasonable. So you could program such a thing if you wanted to. That's called interval halving. It's used quite a bit. OK. So let's um, see how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this in MATLAB. So there are the equations just rewritten. Here I give you parameter values. I didn't feel like writing out the units. But I picked them all to have SI units. That means lengths in meters, um, heat capacities, or joules per second per kilogram, you know, SI units, right? <laughs> I hope, OK. So there's the length. Um, there's the so-called heat transfer coefficient. There's that dimension W. The flow rate of the cold stream and hot stream the, and the relative heat capacities of the two fluids, OK? And there's the initial condition. So I'm telling you, this is not drawn to, to scale, clearly. But I'm telling you, the hot stream here Where'd my chalk go? So I think I'm telling you the cold stream enters at 50 degrees and the hot stream enters at 300 degrees. OK? And I want you to tell me what the hot stream exits at and what the cold stream exits at. OK? <clears throat> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a function like this. OK? I'm going to write a function in MATLAB that allows me t to evaluate the right-hand side of these equations. Typical kind of thing, OK? Because if I want to solve any differential equations in MATLAB, so what am I going to do? I'm going to guess this temperature here. Then I have an initial condition for the hot stream and the cold stream and integrate the two equations forward. So I need a function that allows me to integrate the equations forward. 
right? And that's this function here I wrote. Heat exchanger, that's the name I gave it. <laughs> it's a reasonable name, I believe. Okay. So what does it take? It takes the value of z, which is the, you know, the, um, the independent variable in this case, and then x is a two-dimensional vector. As you can see down here, the first, first component is the cold stream temperature, the second component is the hot stream temperature. Define all the parameters, bing, bing, bing. Specify Tc and Th, so it's easier to write the equations. Write out the first equation, right-hand side of the equation for the cold stream, right-hand side of the equation for the hot stream. You've, you've done this enough now where I think you know what to do, right? All right, so I have this function now. So now I do the following. <coughs> I issue, a, so first thing I'm going to guess, because I don't know what this temperature should be, obviously. I'm going to guess 100. So I don't know. Seems, seems okay. Seems un somewhat reasonable. So I guess 100, and then I issue this command, right? So I use this integrator. Any integrator is fine for this problem. I have my program heat exchanger. I want to integrate from 0 to 10, because that's my domain, right? My thing is 10 meters long. So I'm going to integrate from the entrance of the uh, exchanger to the exit of the exchanger. And that's my initial condition for the cold stream temperature. I know that. That's my guess for the hot stream. I just integrate these equations forward in time. And then not, I did it, and I plotted it. Right? Everyone knows how to plot. So I plotted the result, and it looks like this. Cold stream starts there, goes there. <clears throat> hot stream started at 100 and went up to 257.9. Right? That's the temperature at the exit because that's the exit right over there. And 257.9 is not equal to 300. <laughs> so I guess, I guess badly, no surprise there. So you, based on your understanding of the process, you, you would probably imagine if I want the hot stream to enter to have a hotter, higher value there, I'd better have a guess a higher number over here, higher than 100. <clears throat> so I probably tried 125. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm integrating it. And the only thing I've changed over here is what my initial condition is for the hot stream. Now it's 125 instead of 100. Integrate the equations, plot the result. It's pretty sensitive, right, to the initial value, or to the value on, that I guessed over here. Of course, I, I'm a liar, though, is the only problem. <laughs> you can see I guessed 150. I didn't guess 125. What can I say? <laughs> Mistake. I made, I made a typo there. I'll, f I'll fix that. I won't fix it now, because sometimes when I fix it in real time, people look mad. I don't know why. They just look agitated. All right. <clears throat> so I actually guessed 150. I went way up to 465.9, and that's obviously not equal to 300, right? So I guess now you can safely say the, t the guess I should be making is between 100 and 150, <laughs> right? Now, the thing that makes me unique is I immediately honed in on the right value, okay? Actually, I guessed many, many times, and this is the answer, OK? I tried 105. That's not actually the right answer. Tried 105. Um, then I came up. I'm doing better, but not quite, right? So issued the same command. Now with this number 105, I got to 278 or so. And f I don't know how many times I guessed. I probably guessed about 10 times to get this closer, 12 times. I don't know. Um, I tried 110.1, OK? And then came out of the react, came out of the exchange was 300, exactly what I wanted. Okay, so that means that's the solution to the problem, right? The hot stream enters at 300 and exits at my guess 110.